but this is the Ravers story. I'm going to make it really quick. Uh, so the Ravers started from, uh, I used to do demos in the basement here with, with Eric Frey, a.k.a. Joe Bloomstone. He was in the Imperialist Pigs and Punk Eddie in the Turncoats with Tom Pig from Poison Idea way back in like 1980. And, uh, and before that, 1979, he was my best friend all through high school and grade school. And he played drums and I learned to sing from Eric. And uh, so we made demos and from those demos down the basement from tape player to tape player, uh, it's high to the overdubs. I got a recording offer at a real studio with Rob Sample, and he produced a full color woman, and he changed my life. And then from that, I got uh, a record offer from Rob hooked up with this independent label called Matchbox Records. And the guy that ran it was Andy McKay, and later on he retired like in 2015 from as a, the top dog, the senior vice president of the entire Universal thing, right? And uh, he'd been with CBS and MCA and started at Arista, and uh, I, I learned a lot from that guy. But uh, Rob was our producer until he just took over, and Andy said, no, nope, I'm going to produce this record. It was pretty cool to go record every night for a couple of weeks. I was a little bit miffed when I found out that a car's not going to come and pick us up, take us to some big studio, feed us, have a tray of catering, and then we get all brand new gear. He said, no, we're going to make a record. <laughs> Whoa, what? Just make a record? We're going to just record? Yeah, and you're not going to make any money off this. You're not going to make shit. In fact, here's a buck. Sign the contract so it'll be legal. And that's what he did. I learned a lot. Like I said, I learned a lot from this guy. I didn't take his advice. He said... You know, rock stars never make it. You're never going to make any money being a museum. You should be a publicity guy. And remember, kids, when you go down to the crossroads and you meet the man in the big black car and he's got a nice suit on and you, he says, what do you want? You say, I want to be famous. Make sure you say rich and famous first. Say rich first. That means the money is a priority. And, uh, I mean, ask for the money because you can always use money. We did this record. I had a band called uh, The Penetrators. That's what we were called at the time. We played the Urban Noise with Fred and Ronnie Noise, and uh, they owned that club. Uh, the Long Goodbye with Tony DiMacoli. He was a father, a godfather, and he looks like a godfather, of the Portland punk scene, an original music scene. And uh, we played with all these guys, the Malchicks, the Balloons, the Odds with Dwayne Jarvis, and... You know, a lot of these guys went to bigger and better things. I stayed in Portland and ended up playing heavy metal. <laughs> but that's how I got my start. It was a couple of great years. And uh, the band broke up after we did the record. The Brad Simpson, the drummer, shot some guy on a bus. Not long after that, I got a call from Mick Zane from Malice and asked me if I wanted to come and jam with Pete Holmes and Jeff... Horton, Jeff Mark, and him, and a band that they had, that Danny Kurth, the bass player for Wild Dogs, had just left. Ironic how we keep chasing our tails. And, uh, well, that's all I got to say about that. There's a whole show down below here, uh, the Root Awakening Ravers era, and a concert from the Neighbors Woodcraft. <laughs> I'm Matt McCourt. This is U.S. Metal TV on usmetal.com, and I'll see you on the next banner. Click the banners for each band story, and I'll be here. And uh, thank God it's not autoplay, right? Hey, Cheers. You want to